Uh, okay, great. So I'm going to be talking about deep fry. I know some of you already got a tutorial on fry yesterday, but I'm not going to assume that, so don't worry. And, I'm, and even if you were there, and I'm not going to assume you remembered everything. So we'll start from scratch. Uh, fry is a, one of the main engines uh, beneath Stark. It stands for Fast Read Solomon IOPP, which stands for something itself. Uh, and uh, this is a, a, it's about verifying that functions are like polynomials. So I'm going to talk about uh, the problem, and I'll talk about uh, some new improvements, uh, which are called deep fry. Uh, so the plan for this talk, I'll talk about the setting. It's about sublinear time interactive proofs. And uh, in particular, I'll talk about Starks. Uh, then one of the main technical problems that arises here is uh, the problem of uh, proving polynomiality. So to prove that something looks like a polynomial, for which there's a really nice protocol called the Fry protocol. I'll remind you what it is. I'll give you some motivation for uh, how it works. I'll talk about a new optimal analysis of this protocol. And finally, I'll talk about Deep Fry, which gives improved uh, uh, polynomiality proving. And uh, yeah, and it stands there for domain extension for eliminating pretenders. But, I, but I'm pretty sure that uh, whatever we did, the answer would have been called deep fry. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, so, the setting uh, sublinear time proof verification. We, there's some long string W, and there's a verifier. And we want to be convinced that this verifier, uh, the verifier wants to be convinced of some property of W. Okay. And there's a prover who's trying to do this convincing. Okay. And uh, the verifier is going to run in sublinear time. So, it doesn't have enough time to see all of W. And the prover still wants to convince the verifier that it uh, that this string had some property, okay? And uh, and the setting is so. Let me just be precise. So uh, the the verifier asks some questions, then the prover writes something down, and the verifier can access a few locations of what was written down again. Uh, good. Then the verifier asks some more questions, and the prover writes something else down. And and then this is the mode of interaction, and the kinds of things that we want to measure measure are okay. So how much time does the prover require to run? Uh, how much time does the verifier require to run? And also, maybe the total length of all the prover responses. This, co this corresponds to total proof length in an, in an eventual uh, Stark proof. Uh, okay, and, uh, and, the, and the kind of properties that we seek uh, of such a protocol are, so one is completeness. That, so if W has the property, there should be a way for the prover to convince the verifier of this. Uh, and it should always succeed with probability one. Uh, one observation about sublinear time verifiers is if you have a verifier that's going to run in sublinear time, uh, you cannot distinguish between a string w which is exactly in the property and a string w that differs from having the property by just one bit. Because in sublinear time, you're not going to be able, able to access all the bits of, of the string. So it's just automatic from the setting of the problem that you have to, uh, any such protocol has to accept strings that are close to having the property. So, this, so in the soundness aspect of this proof system, we're not going to be able to say we reject every string that does not have the property. That's too much to ask. Instead, we'll ask that we reject strings that are far from having the property. And for strings that are in between, we don't care what happens. We know automatically that if you're too close to the property, you will be accepted with high probability. Okay, so, so this is the model for the, for the question. Uh, uh, so uh, we have a completeness setting where we accept things in which have the property. And we want to reject things that are far from having the property. And things in between, we, we, don't, we don't care. Uh, so this problem has been studied for a very long time. In some sense, it's, un it's, it, uh, it's unbelievable that this is even possible. And uh, there were many, many breakthroughs in complexity theory long ago, which uh, showed that some non-trivial things could be done, and then very non-trivial things could be done. One uh, important result in this is the PCP theorem from the early 90s. And there was lots of work, lots of work uh, on, uh, on problems like this. Very recently, many um, uh, these things have taken on a new life, especially because of a ready-made application in, uh, uh, in blockchains. I'm now talking about things I don't know. Uh, yeah, OK. And there are lots of new protocols. Every day, there's a new thing. Uh, uh, anyway, I got a list from Ellie. Uh, <laughs> ZK boo sounds a bit suspicious. Maybe that was it. <laughs> that was a bit. It's a, it's a thing. Okay, right. I thought it was a typo, but okay, I just copied and pasted. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. 
Okay, uh, so now I'll focus on stocks. Uh, there are two main ingredients to stocks. One is, so stocks is a solution for proving of general computation. Uh, there are two main ingredients. One is encoding this computation using polynomials. In this case, univariate polynomials. Uh, and then next is verification of polynomiality. And uh, I will focus on that problem for this talk. Okay, so the main question is, how do you verify that a given string is the evaluation table of a polynomial, and we're in the same model as I said, sublinear time verification. So strings that are uh, uh, exactly polynomials we want to accept, and strings that are far from polynomials we want to reject. And now I'm going to formulate the question exact, uh, precisely. So we have a finite field f, which is of size q. I'll sometimes call it fq. We have an evaluation domain d in f, whose size is n, and we're given access to a function f. Eval on the evaluated on the domain. So it takes values in the field F. And it's supposed to be a polynomial. So yeah, it's supposed to take values in the field F. And we have access to a prover who is going to help us. Okay, and uh, for concrete settings of interest possibly in real life, here are some numbers. Okay, 2 to the 150 and uh, 2 to the 30. So running in time Q is not acceptable for anything. But running in time N may be acceptable for approval. Okay, and and the properties that we want is that if f is a polynomial of degree less than rho n, we want to accept. And if f is far from polynomials of degree rho, uh, rho n, we want to reject. So rho is a parameter. You can think of it as 0 0.1. Uh, so, uh, so these accept and reject, let me remind you. If f is a polynomial of degree less than rho n, there is a way for the prover to make you accept with probability 1. If f is far from polynomials of degree less than rho n, no matter what the prover does, you want to reject with the high probability. Yeah, so the quantifiers on the prover are slightly different in the two cases. And there's a really ingenious protocol for this. This is the Fry protocol by uh, uh, Ellie, Michael, and, uh, and co-authors from uh, yeah, a couple of years ago. It's beautiful, super fast. It just takes linear prover work. So uh, n, remember, n was the size of the evaluation domain. Linear uh, prover work, linear proof size, log and verifier time, and it's very, very elegant and clean. And I'm going to describe that to you right now. Uh, so the main ingredient in here is a, a degree respecting projection. Okay, I'm, I'm going to tell you the main properties of it. This is what it does. So you're given a function f, evaluated on a domain, and it takes a random seed x then the degree respecting projection of f with x is a new function, f prime, of half the length. It's of length n over 2. It's evaluated over a domain of size n over 2, also taking values in f. So, so the picture is this. We have function f evaluated over a domain. The degree respecting projection takes in a little bit of random seed x and produces a string of half the length. OK? And it has some properties. Uh, one, it's local. It's lo any single entry of f prime depends on just two entries of f, and of course on x. So it's local. It's degree respecting, in that if f was a low degree function, then so is f prime, and low is now measured with respect to the new domain size. So if that that was a, a rho n degree, down here you have rho times n prime, okay, which is half of the previous degree. So it, and finally. It's also farness preserving, okay, and this is uh, sort of the most technical part. Uh, if f is far from low degree, then f prime is quite far from low degree with high probability. And the probability is over the random choice of x. Okay, there's no randomness in f. Whether f is far from low degree or not, that's a deterministic property. And uh, with high probability over the choice of x, f prime is also quite far if f was far. This is the this is the main property of uh, the degree respecting projection. <laughs> I'll tell you what this degree respecting projection is in a second. But it, so if you treat it as a black box, the, the description of the Fry protocol is very easy. But just to give you a sense, I'm going to say what goes on inside. It's related to the FFT. And OK, so uh, very quickly. Uh, so this doesn't work in every possible setting. It only works in st certain structured settings. If D is the domain, we assume that the domain is the set of all nth roots of unity inside the field, where n is a power of 2, so that you can do FFT-like things. 
uh, for example, if f was a poly this polynomial, you would break it into the odd coefficients and the even coefficients. So, maybe a 0 plus a 2 t square plus dot 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 and a 1 t plus a 3 t cube plus dot dot dot. Then that gives a representation of f as uh, g of t square plus t times h of t square. Uh, since g and h are evaluated on the squares of the domain, they are naturally, you can think of them as being evaluated on the n over 2th roots of unity in the field. This is exactly what happens in the FFT algorithm for, uh, for yeah, so th this may all seem familiar. Uh, and if you want an explicit formula, g is this. Which, and they, from this, you can see that each entry of g is, uh, depends only on two entries of f. Okay, and now the degree respect respecting projection of f with respect to h is a random linear combination of g and h. The randomness is x. So, it's, so we take f, we break it into two pieces. g and h are themselves both half the degree of f. They are, eval they are naturally evaluated only on a domain d prime which is of half the size. So these are basically vectors of half the length. And then we take a random linear combination with the coefficient being x. This is the degree respecting projection. Why is it degree respecting? Uh, because if you start with a polynomial of degree k, the g and h themselves will be of degree k over 2, which is uh, what we, and a random linear combination of two polynomials of degree k over 2 is also degree k over 2. Okay, so we won't need the insides of this ever again, but this is good to know. We are going to do that. Yeah. Uh, so, the suggestion is uh, the Fry protocol. Uh, we have a prover, we have a verifier, there is a common function f which they can both uh, access. Uh, it has two phases, the commit phase where we, okay, it is going to repeatedly apply the degree respecting projection. Start with f, the function f0 and we will call it f. Then the first thing we do is we will take a degree respecting projection of f0 this will shrink the length of it by by a factor 2. So, we send x 0 and ask the prover to give you the degree respecting projection back. This is of half the length. The verifier does not read everything, right? Uh, the model is the prover writes it down and the verifier can access any bit of it if it wants, okay? So, it is written it down, the verifier does not look at it yet. Then it says, okay, now give me the degree respecting projection of f 1 with respect to a new random seed x 1. So, it sends x 1 gets back f2, which is of half the length and it keeps going on and you keep doing this until, uh, yeah, until some point uh, we have to decide where. Uh, at each stage, the thing that uh, the prover sends back is of half the length. So, the total length of all these things is linear. Uh, good. This is the Fry protocol. I mean, this is the, okay, this is the commit phase of the Fry protocol. The next phase, which is the query phase, is to now check that what the prover has done is all consistent with the polynomial being low degree. Okay, and so I'll say that now. Uh, so, okay, so if f was truly low degree, what would have happened? You started with polynomial degree rho n. At the next stage, it's still rho times half of n, and then it's rho times. Uh, it's still rho times the length of the function written so far. So, if you keep repeating this, at some point you will end up with a constant degree polynomial, so a constant polynomial, so degree 0 polynomial, uh, evaluated at 1 over rho points, and all those values ought to be the same. That is what a constant polynomial looks like. And that is something you can check at the end. Okay, so, now the query phase is just to make sure that this happened. First, you check that the f i plus 1 is locally consistent with the relevant values of fi. Remember, degree respecting projections are local. So, you can check by just query for a, a random value in f 1, you can check two values of f and check that there is the local consistency between them and then just keep doing this. So, for a, the same thing for f 2. So, you check that each fi, uh, fi plus 1 is locally consistent with the two relevant values of fi and then you check that f t is constant at the end and this is the whole protocol now. Right. That is correct. All oh, right. Okay. So, uh, good, good point. So, this is uh, you are talking about within the degree respecting projection, I my definition involved uh, f being a polynomial. Okay. So, yes, good. That is a really good question. Uh, 
G and H, you can treat, treat them as defined in terms of F. That definition doesn't depend on F being uh, a polynomial. So given a function F, you can define G to be by that formula. And then, and that formula happens to be such that for low degree polynomials, it goes to low, low degree polynomials. That's a really good question. I should have said, there are a few lies scattered throughout the talk. Uh, if you find one, you get a point. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, we want, we want to get stuck somewhere. If f is far from polynomials, we want to catch you. Okay, so I will show you now why if f is far from polynomials, you will catch the prover in some lie. Okay. Okay, so now let me just do the analysis really quickly. So the one side is clear, this is the completeness side. If f is actually low degree and the prover is honest, then everything passes the probability one. That motivated this whole protocol. The soundness, so what's this, what do we have to do? We have to say that, oh, if f is far from low degree, we want to show that this protocol catches you with high probability, okay? And uh, the, the, it goes with two cases. Uh, we're going to use the farness preservation property of degree respecting pro projections. So if all the fi plus, so at every stage, the prover is asked to give the degree respecting projection of fi with respect to xi, okay? If all those answers were honest, namely if all the fi plus one are close to drp of fi and xi, then, uh, okay, then, well, then what happens is that the distance of fi from xi, uh, the distance of fi from low degree, the farness gets preserved. If f zero was far, then so is f1, then so is f2. At every stage, the function fi stays far from low degree polynomials. So, okay, in that case, we'll catch it at the very end when you were supposed to have written a constant degree polynomial, but uh, the farness preservation lemma said that at the end, uh, you will be far from constant degree polynomials. The other case is some fi plus one is far away from the degree respecting projection of fi. So at some stage, the prover, instead of writing the, uh, the correct f3 that he was supposed to write, he wrote something which was far away from that f3 you're supposed to write. Then the local check between f3 and f2 will catch that. Okay, and so this, this is basically the whole analysis of uh, Fry. Okay, all the, the heart of it is, uh, and, and this is what the final theorem is. If F is delta far from polynomials of degree rho n, then no matter what the prover does, uh, Fry catches it with probability. Okay, so at first reading, ignore this. You can think of rho as small, so rho to the one third is small, one minus rho to the one third is just one, so it says delta. So a polynomial which is delta far from, uh, sorry, a function which is delta far from polynomials is caught with probability delta. This would be an amazing theorem if it was true the way I said it. Uh, unfortunately, it's not true. It, uh, there's a one minus rho to the one third there. That's unfortunate and uh, even worse, it's necessary. So there are examples where uh, the Fry protocol, but these are extremely structured examples that don't come up in real uh, uh, stark situations as far as we know, but uh, okay, so uh, that is necessary. There are examples where Fry needs that uh, min over there. Uh, but if rho is small, it's still a good quantity. If rho is small, then this whole thing is still, you know, it's, it may not be delta, but it's very close to delta. Uh, and uh, Previously, this was analyzed by BBHR and in a previous work with Ellie and uh, Shubhangi. Uh, okay, great. Yeah? Yeah? It's another analysis of the same protocol. It's exactly the same protocol of BBHR from the original paper. It's just a new analysis. Yes, we do know it's tight. That's what the but necessary part is. So. Uh, yes, you cannot uh, do without this, that expression over there is the best you could hope to uh, get as a bound on uh, the rejection probability of Fry. On the domain, that's correct, yes. Other questions? Uh, and the main technical part in here has, it's, it's a statement about random linear combinations of functions, uh, just because that's, the somehow the main ingredient of uh, of the distance uh, dis the degree respecting projection, which is you take two functions and you take a random linear combination of them. I'll just write the statement here. Uh, 
If you have two functions u and v such that u plus x v is delta close to polynomials of low degree for many choices of x, then u and v themselves are pretty close to the polynomials of low degree. That's what the statement is. Uh, and this is a very general statement. I may not be doing so well on time, so I had the proof in one sentence. Okay. Uh, it'll take too much time. Uh, it's a long sentence. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. Okay. So finally, I'm going to talk about deep fry. Uh, it gets improved bounds on the soundness. It's a okay. So so let's take a step back. What are we doing with fry? Let's just focus on the first uh, round. What are we asking the prover for in in fry? Uh, what we're asking the prover, so it's about how you're interviewing uh, your criminal suspect. Do you ask them questions for which you know the answer to, just to check their general credibility? Or do you ask them questions for which you do not know the answer to? So what we're doing is the, yeah, so there, we ask the prover for F1, we ask the prover for F1. Any single entry of F1, we could have computed ourselves. You just query two locations of F and you get it yourself. So and then we and okay so that's the strategy we're doing currently with fry. Another possibility is you just ask a, a totally random question to the prover. Oh, you think oh you know a polynomial that's uh, equal to f? Okay, tell me about the polynomial. Uh, what color shirt is it wearing? I don't know. And uh, uh, so maybe maybe we can uh, expose the the prover even while asking it questions about which we don't know the answer to. Okay, so that's what we're going to try to do now. We're going to ask the prover for about deeper things and uh, just try to catch the prover in a contradiction within themselves rather than uh, having an answer which I know it should have been. Okay, so, so that's the high level for what we're doing. We're going to use the prover uh, for something more. Okay, so, so one can think of many things to ask the prover. One very natural thing to ask for is asking for evaluations outside the domain D. Okay, so we're working with polynomials over some finite field. We had a domain which is a subset of the whole field, and we can ask for po evaluations outside. If I give, ask for an evaluation outside, there's no way the verifier can check this. To determine, I mean, if you have a function written down of degree D or a degree A, say, then you need at least a values of the function in order to determine any other evaluation of f outside. So the verifier has no chance of checking the answer to an evaluation outside. But okay, we can ask for it. Okay, and then maybe we'll catch the prover in some contradiction later. Okay, so we pick z from the big field fq, the whole field, and we ask, okay, this f is supposed to be a polynomial. Tell me the evaluation of that polynomial on z. And if f is truly a low degree polynomial, the prover will be able to do this because there is an underlying low degree polynomial. Otherwise, the prover has to say something. So it can make something up and we can't check it. But we'll still incorporate this into all our future interviewing of the prover. Uh, I, sorry, interrogating of the prover. Right. <laughs> okay, so this is how we incorporate the prover's answer into everything else we'll do. So the prover claimed that P of z is a. P is the polynomial that underlies the function f. So if that is the case, then the polynomial P of t minus a is divisible by t minus z. This is div divisible in the polynomial sense. So the polynomial t minus z divides P of t minus a. This is just uh, algebra. So you can now look at this ratio polynomial P of t minus a over t minus z. And this is supposed to be a low degree polynomial. Okay, so this fact will simulate now here. You take a new function, f star, also defined on the same domain, which uh, is defined by exactly the same formula. F, of, f star of y is f of y minus a over y minus z. And this is supposed to be a low degree polynomial in the case where uh, f is truly a low degree polynomial. So we can start talking about f star. If f, if f itself was not close to a low degree polynomial, then okay, then we have to see what happens. So the fact that comes to our rescue is the following. Uh, the distance of the new function f star from low degree polynomials is equal to the distance of f from polynomials p which have the correct value at z. Okay, so, the, so 
by doing this operation starting with f and going to f star the we have eliminated all polynomials p that do not take the value a at z they are no longer in the running we are only going to work with f star from now on f is no longer in the picture if you want to access something about f well you get it out of that formula relating f and f star but this operation got rid of many many polynomials that were potentially close to f so with that uh, motivation i can just tell you the high level structure of the protocol deep fry okay it's the same high level structure as fry it works as follows you start with f0 now you ask the prover for the evaluation of fi at a random point zi you incorporate this information into uh into your fi so incorporate which information the claimed value of fi at zi and you get a new function fi star and with fi star we do a degree uh, a degree respecting projection to get fi plus 1 and we keep repeating this process uh and the intuition for the improvement the prover is forced to commit to out of domain values and this eliminates a lot of uh, pretenders that could have uh, been there let me just draw a picture that's f these are the nearby polynomials the polynomials that are close to f that the prover had in mind it's going to pretend to be some of these but now you go and say oh tell me what uh, the value at z is and then the prover has to give an answer it's either this or this or this if it gives this then the only polynomial in the running is blue if it's this the only one is green if it's this the only one is red there is a chance that oh z got picked to be here in which case you get to choose both blue and green but uh, yeah but these are low degree polynomials they almost never agree with each other if you pick z from a very large domain you're almost surely going to have all the polynomials being distinct uh so you have narrowed your list down to only one and once you're down to only one the it uh, uh yeah the things become much much simpler because there's only one polynomial to fight against okay and uh, the theorem about uh, deep fry is that uh, uh the same setting as fry the one minus row to the one third became one minus row to the one half that's better you can check <laughs> because <laughs> uh it's that one minus root to the one half is a bit unfortunate uh, we feel it shouldn't be there uh there's a very well studied problem called the listy codability of reed solomon codes it asks when you have a function how many low degree polynomials can be close to it it's extremely well studied uh, there are a lot of papers on it my first paper in theory 15 years ago was with it on it with eli uh anyway assuming the best possible results and that's uh, for that problem there is actually a good uh, uh oh this should have been deep fry this also deep fry the there is an improved bound on the analysis of deep fry and this would be the optimal answer so i i believe that this is the case but i don't know how to show it uh yeah the best we were able to show was uh the result above and and the proof involves uh, yeah all the ideas in fry plus a little bit more i'll say one in one slide these ideas can be used uh, to get better stocks not just in uh, uh improved polynomial proving but even in the other part where you reduce general computation to uh, to polynomial proving and i mentioned two quick open questions uh one is uh, okay so we we yeah in some settings we believe fry actually is as good as uh, we could hope for the rejection probability of fry is actually delta this is this would be really really good because it gives improved soundness or the optimal possible soundness for uh, the fry protocol i think uh, this is a really really nice question and uh, other high level questions are yeah well, can you get more out of the prover we we lim the prover can answer anything you want yeah we should use it uh and it, it would uh, be a it would be good for getting an improved rejection probability to query trade off for for uh, both the polynomial t proving and also stocks uh, okay yeah i'm done so, so we have time for one quick question and the rest will take uh, offline yeah do we do we have another microphone to uh, get on the stack i i
Hi, thank you for the talk. Um, I uh, wanted to ask about this delta and uh, minimum of uh, one. Yeah. Um, as I understand it, rho might be something like one eighth. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I would have assumed that delta would have been tiny, in which case the the minimum doesn't really matter. Is that incorrect? So the setting where yeah. So the question is about yeah. Uh, how far? do you expect uh, a cheating prover to have a function? So the, the intended application is a setting where uh, uh, maybe there's some general computation and you had a stark proof for it, and the cheating prover came up with an almost assignment which almost satisfied all the constraints. But once you do a low degree extension of that uh, or, or, yeah, so the prover should not be able to come up with a function which is even remotely close to, uh, to a true polynomial in in the typical setting, so I think the the real the real action is when the function f is random, for example, and then it would be maximally far from polynomials of low degree, which would be one minus rho. So I think a good setting for delta is one minus rho rather than very small. Uh, it's very hard to come up with uh, after you p plug in all the stark machinery above it. At, it's very hard for to imagine a scenario where somebody came up with a function which satisfied all those star constraints and is still uh, really close to low degree. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's okay. It.